sort of fun too, right? For those who've actually followed me, my name's Nigel. I'm 50 summer, the best guess. I used to be a sailor. Then I had the name of Hans. There we go. That's me. That's my name at the bottom. Now I served for 22 years in the Royal Navy. That's the proof. There's only ever one of these. Well, that's the proof. Thank you for all the years I've done in the Navy. That is what I got. What I'm about to tell you will either make you cry or make you angry. Take your choice. 35 years ago, I made a video. And on the side of the video, correction, on the side of the AVO multimeter, it had my name like that. It was clearly displayed as I was doing everything. So there's only one AVO, there's only one of them, there's only one of me, there's only one of them documents. So anybody else trundling around claiming to be me is wrong. Now this is what I've done in the video. It caused the death of at least one man that I know of. That death, although it claimed accidental, was most likely to have been murder by the Royal Navy. I said to a group of very, very high level people, what's one and one? One plus one. There's a question. Everybody like yourself turn around and say, oh, it's going to be two. I said, no, it's not. You've got it wrong. And they said, why? Well, they said, because of this. As you can see, there's two magnets here. How many norths and how many souths? So I've put up in the room, on the board, a magnet with a north and a south. And I said, you have one north, you have one south, but you have one magnet. And I went, yeah, so what? What's the crazy about that? When you put another magnet next to it, you've still only got one south, one north, and one magnet. So one plus one equals one. And even with inside one magnet, you have one plus one equals one. And if you keep going all the way down to the atomic structure, right the way down to hydrogen, you end up with one neutron, one proton equals one atom. And they went, oh, what can you do with that? I said, absolutely loads. That's why I'm here. So not only did I trace the principle of Euclidean mathematics, based on a magnet, I then went on to scare them. I said, you always perceive that infinity looks like that. Whereas if you look at infinity very, very closely, it's actually two circles. When you look at one circle, it's 360 degrees. Plus 360 degrees means infinity is 720 degrees. Yeah, so what? So well, it's not, you got it wrong, again. Because everything resides around a magnet, a lodestone. They've been here an awful lot longer than us humans. So when you take a magnetic body like so, and you have a north and you have a south, you think that's it. Well, it's not. It goes from there, and then goes around the back, goes over itself and goes there. And the other one goes the other way. It goes from there, it goes around the back, around the south and goes there. So you end up with a loop there, a loop there, a loop there, and a loop there. But these two loops are actually one of the same. So you end up with a value here, which is 360 degrees, a value here, which is 360 degrees, a value here, which is 360, and 360. So you have 1,400 and 70 degrees in infinity.
The problem with that is when you overlay it on the earthbound model of what you humans think you have, you think you've got that, which equals 720, and I've just proven there's that, which is actually two times that, or twice infinity. Oops. That did upset an awful lot of phys physicists and mathematicians in the room. There was only one who actually stood by and nodded and giggled in the background. And it was a chap called Lieutenant Commander Ian St. John Stevens, about the brightest man I ever met. He used to be my professor. I was his protege. He used to poke me with all sorts of stuff. So after I showed them that, they said, well, you can't screw around with infinity. You're not allowed to, because everything's based on infinity. I said, absolute rubbish. If we take a dot and we claim that dot as zero, we can go in a direction for infinity, like so. But it also means we can go the other way for infinity. And therefore, for infinity to exist, it needs to be two times infinity. That's what I just said in the magnet. Furthermore, if you can go that way, that way, you can go 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 that way. And anyone who's quite clever, here is the given length in space, and when you do that, you get an arc, like that. And you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. That is pi. Therefore, because that curve is longer than the straight line, like that, it means that pi is greater than infinity. Oops. They didn't like that. Well, what else can you do with it, Chief? Because you seem to be saying that everything we've done is wrong. I said, yeah, it is. Based on that. Magnet. Well, Einstein said E equals MC squared, and that's what we all done, and that's what the planet used, and I said, well, you've all been fools. Because if we look at Bertie's fantastic equation, we have that, which is the energy is equal to the mass times constant squared. But a constant is here, and the mass is here. He then turned round and said that the constant was 3 times 10 to the power of 8 metres per second. The more mass the more you put in, the closer you go, the more energy you get out. Bang, bomb, nuke, kill people, Hiroshima, as the Americans. And Hoppenheimer. Right, we'll stay there. We'll take the magnet. It's not moving. It equates to zero. Therefore, zero times the constant equals zero. Zero times any number, zero. You know that. Well, if that was zero, there's no energy whatsoever. That magnet will fall on the floor. Brit, don't. So the magnet defies E equals MC squared. That threw the cat amongst the pigeons. They said, do you realise what you've just done? I went, I haven't even started. Let's go back to Mr Einstein. Again, I'm not pissing around his equation because it was crap. Like that. And I said, the next thing you've got to look at 
is a 2D representation of a 3D spatial equation on a piece of paper where we've only got an X and a Y. The problem with that is if you have an origin of zero and you've got a plus value, you've got a plus value and you've got a plus value, that gives you a plus value. Well, me like all of you lot, I've got a bank account. Me, like all of you lot, on occasions have gone in the red, which is a minus. Which means there must be a minus in the equation. You can't have a plus of everything, because even the wavelength, the wobbly bit, or the RF that feeds your Wi-Fi, goes like that, up and down, plus and minus, plus and minus. When you open the fridge door, the temperature is minus. Okay, you get the gist of it. That means there must be a minus there, there must be something there, and there must be something there. That means the greatest amount of power must be there, because everything else is going the wrong way. Because the magnet at zero, as a stationary body, is generating more energy at zero than anything else that's on there. That results in a modification to the equation, and this is where the whole fun started. I said, magnetic energy divided by its inertia equals energy. A magnetic inertia, divided, magnetic energy divided by the inertia, the gap between here and the board, equals energy. Even at zero, it exists. You can't have something at zero, they turned around and said. Prove me wrong. Can't prove me wrong, but they would not agree. I said, okay, if you can't do it that way, and you still won't settle for it, we'll dick around with a common thing known as thermodynamics. Thermodynamics, and it comes in two flavours. It's got law one and law two. Law one says you can't create matter, you can only change matter from one state to another. Where an example of that is a tank of oil, a tank of fuel. A car engine, we'll do a four cylinder one, and drive, and the car goes forward. The fuel goes to the engine and is converted, and that is converted to motion. That means you can't have something for free. It means the output product of here is heat from the engine, it's noise from the engine, there's power in motion, and there's friction, and there is wind resistance. All of them are the converted value of the fuel. You can only convert matter, you cannot create matter. That's what that law says. A magnet. I am not physically putting any energy whatsoever into that magnetic body. It is stationary, it is null but it is deriving its own energy and matter for the fact that it's there. Which means that that law fails itself with a magnet. The second law is determined as entropy. We can make that one nice and easy. So, so we have here matter can neither be created nor destroyed only converted to matter of another form.
Okay, and the next one is entropy. And entropy says you can't have something for free. If we've got our tank of fuel, and we've got our car engine, and we've got our car, the car cannot go for infinity because the tank will run out of fuel. You can't have something for free. Simple. Magnet's not going anywhere. Magnet is zero. Magnet is stationary. The energy holding it onto the board, where did it come from? It defies entropy. So this room of professors and very, very senior Royal Naval military people were going white. That a 28-year-old man who was dyslexic mate, had trashed, in less than an hour, Einstein. Entropy. The first and second laws were gone. I then went on to screw another man called Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton turned around and says, gravity stuff. Yeah. Gravity is something that goes down, makes you and I stick onto the ground, that's what we've been told, makes the apple fall from the tree and all the rest of the things. When aeroplanes fall out of the sky, if there's no fuel. And he said that the force is equal to the mass acceleration, which is equal to the mass and gravity, which is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, hold on. In our case, that's zero. And as it's not going down, that is zero. Therefore, F is equal to zero times zero equals 9.81 meters per second. Oops. Chief Petty Officer Hands, do you know what you've actually done. Yep. I've upset academia. I've upset the officer's hierarchy. You know, the silver spoon merchant, Al now brown cows, those officers in the Royal Navy who think they're actually better than you. I was just a lowly irk. And I've beat all the physicists and all the engineers and all the electronics engineers. Two magnets. I then turn around and says, well, I can go even better than that. I said, because, because you actually say the, goal, the Holy Grail is that. It's cold, it's cold fusion. How to get energy at room temperature without doing anything. Oh, you can't actually get, yeah, it's impossible. And I went, cold fusion. There's energy holding that on the board. It's cold, it's at room temperature. You're getting more out than you're putting in. You're not putting any in it and it's energy because it's held in there and it's defying gravity, it's cold fusion. And they go, huh? Ah, I don't understand that. Well, you're the one with all the degrees and the A-levels and the, you're the physicists and the mathematicians and you can't even work that out. It doesn't make you very clever, does it? It just makes you very, very stupid. Now, the Royal Navy is a real stiff upper lip bunch of knobheads. They do not like being belittled by a very young, naive man. I said, well, I can actually go one better. Because when you play with a magnet and you understand a magnet, then you understand that the magnetic fields, there isn't two, North and South, there's four. 
So if we take our four magnetic fields and we'll have, shall we say, there's the first one, like that, as a north. Obviously it goes in the loop. And we've got one there as the south. And the red comes off on a loop, as we know, like that. And the blue comes off on a loop. Oh, sorry. Like that. That's the first thing. Yeah, that's because it's a round object. So I'll just do it the other way as long as you can see it. We've got four magnetic fields. Two that you play with, which is north and south, and two that you didn't even know existed. The two in the middle are known as the magnetotoroidal field. It's a Doppler field. It goes like this. So sometimes you see it towards you, sometimes you don't, like that. The Doppler effect of the fire engine and the train whistle going past when it changes in frequency. Meow. Yeah, that shift in frequency is called Doppler. And it occurs here all the time. Well, because I know that there's actually four magnetic fields, I thought, well, can we actually extract anything out of these four fields? Can we now utilise the fact that there are four fields? And I went on to demonstrate, this was all recorded on a video, by the way, that the Royal Navy's got. I actually assembled five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I put ten magnets on there and some professor put his hand, I don't know who he was, but why are you using ten? And I said, well, you've only got ten fingers, I doubt if you can actually count any higher right now. That was a perfect insult to upset everybody in the theatre. But they looked, okay, what's he doing? Well, if we've got ten magnets like that, north and south, all glued together, we've got a north here and a south here. And if we apply the one plus one, we've got one plus 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 one equals one magnet. They did not like that. I don't care. They wanted to know what I'd done. So I done that. And I said, well, what you now have to do is kind of use a word called extrapolate, which is to make things and extend them out. So I said, well, okay, if we now consider this as a length, if this was 10 millimetres, and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and 10, we'd have 100 millimetres. Or we could have one kilometre, we could have 10 kilometres. It doesn't matter as long as we've got a value. We can determine that value as the good old fashioned one. And it's actually divided by time. Because you start there at zero in time and you end here at zero plus x of time, don't you? Jump in a car, drive from A to B, you started at one time, ended at the other. The difference between the two is the time. So the frequency of the event, or equals F equals 1 over T. And I went, yeah, I can go with that. And I said, well, remember them four fields that we had? And I'm just going to do a double in one colour like that. They went, yeah. I said, well, if we now look at this and we have all these as individuals, when you take two circles, like so, they connect here at the atomic level, at the very, very small bit, one atom wide, one molecule, or one part of the whole surface of the magnet. That means the whole magnetic, all of the magnetic energy in that body, that's trying to get in that body in Vicky Verky, has to go through there, through that one dot. And it's infinitely small. And what you've actually got is one, two, three, four magnetic fields trying to get through the space that will only permit one. So three of them are going to go a bit bonkers. And I found out that if you take this magnetic body 
and turn it upside down, it's still south and it's still north. But this one is now here and that one's there. It's against its own principle. And I also found out, being a, a rather intrigued person, if you take three and you flip the middle one, the energy level does that. You've still got north and you've still got south. I thought, oh, I like this. What happens if you do four? Well, if you do four, you get nothing because you get two lots of two. One cancels each other out. So I tried five. And I put five together and it worked. And I kept going up until I got to ten. And I found out that if I kind of ignore the last one and make it slightly out of phase, I can concentrate one of these, say the green one, yeah, and the other one was black. I can have one, two, three, four, five, here's the middle. I can make the toroidal field extend greater than the body of the magnet. And they went, uh, scared. I said, well, it's more complicated than that, because if you see the, the, go back and have a look at some of my work, you'll see that this is bi-directional. So there's another one going the other way. Okay? And that means that that one goes to there. And that one goes to there, like that. I've actually got this slightly out of scale, so we're going to have to tune on this one. Well, that results in something strange, because this is actually slightly smaller. Okay, so if I'm going to do this properly, I'm going to have to, I've amplified that so you can see it, but it's slightly different in scale. So if we just do it again in the middle, like that, a bit more, like that, and we know that that one goes there, and that one goes there. The problem we've got here is when we go back to E equals MC squared, where that is three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second, the speed of light, and it's also line of sight. Yeah? Goes one direction, yeah, like that. You can't bend light they say. Have a look at some of my videos, some of my toys. I'll bend light because it's because it's fun. Well, to me, that's not a straight line. It's a curve. Line of sight. Uh, uh, wrong. If you know what you're doing, you can bend light. The next thing to consider is this value here there. If we're talking t time on this equation at zero, we've now got an equation that says I don't go anywhere. So it fails this equation. You start scratching your head, hold on a second, you're going nowhere in no distance against its linear state. The equation collapses. I said, no, it don't. Turn it on its side. Yeah. So when you turn it on its side, you have to make the linear equivalent of what's going on. And the linear equivalent of that is there. At three. So that one is linear, and it's based on pi, as we said. Because pi... If you now put a square in there, like that, pi is greater. But we've got a bigger, bigger problem. And that's for the fact that the origin here to the centre there forms a triangle. And this triangle is bound by a squared, b squared, c squared. Where a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the line of sight. Hold on, but this line here is longer than the line of sight. 
it is longer than the length of A. It means that with inside this configuration of 10 magnets, what we have here is half of time and another half of time. So that is time that is represented to the Mark 1 eyeball and your mathematics. Here you've got time minus time of x because it's shorter than time. Here you have time plus time of x. And here you have time plus time of pi. And here you have time plus time of pi plus the ellipse. Well, you've been told time static. How many lots of time do you want? Everyone exists simultaneously. You cannot have a constant here if that distance is not equal to that. All of these are all different to E equals MC squared. It means that time as a constant is not. It also means that 3 times 10 to the power of 8 with inside a magnet does not exist. It means mass and energy of a magnetic, of a magnetic body defies Einstein. It defies gravity. And it defies first and second laws of thermonuclear dynamic, thermodynamics. Sorry, the nuclear bit. That's a stupid bit. That they come on. They actually now turn around and change the look on the face. They went from the poppycock, what's a lo this load of rubbish, to a look of shock and horror. Do you know what you've done? Yeah, I know what I've done. I shafted you lot. Well and true. Well, I said, well, where are you going with this? I said, I haven't even started yet. If we go back to our magnets here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we tweak it, all right? Let's make it 11, all right? That will make it 12. We can take three and we can change a field. We can take three and we can change a field. We can take three and we can change a field and we can take three and change a field. How many fields in a magnet? Ah, not two, four. Ooh, hold on a second. If you've got north coming out there and you've got south coming out there and you can extrapolate four here, it means that two of these, one must be north and one must be south. And it must loop on itself like that, which is what you've seen when we had that. And you had that, you had two ways, one going that way and one going that way. But by doing it this way, by adding an extra two, you can now extract these two fields. That one is swallowed up to the north south, that one's swallowed back to the north. These two haven't got a clue where they're going. But guess what? That's a plus and that's a minus. And if you take a circuit like that and put it on an LED, guess what the LED does? It lights up from a row of magnets. It was at that point they went stop, 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 stop. And I went, well, why have I got to stop? If you can produce light like that from an LED off a set of magnets, then we don't need oil on the planet. I went, yeah, you don't need it. Well, you know that oil actually drives the currency in the form of the tax dollar, tax pound, tax euro. Yeah. But if there's no tax, there's no government. Well, yeah, there is a government. It just means you don't have enough money for the war machine, which is you lot. 
Well, what else you done? I said, well, I actually looked a bit closer at the planet. You know, this great big ball that you sit on, like that. And you've got a north there, and you've got a south there, and you have a magnetosphere, like that. Well, that's a natural lie. Yeah. The magnetosphere goes like that. On the equator. Just like I showed you in the magnet. So this bit where it says it's coming out there and it's coming out there, that's half right. But it's also coming out there and it's coming out there. But they're both going the same direction. Right? So if we try and change this slightly to make a better representation. So the energy is coming out there, 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 there. Okay, and it's going around and it's been doing it for around about 4.7 billion years. And if you push something, it doesn't matter how small it is, but you do it constantly over a very, 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 very long time, you create a thing called rotation. Never worked out why the planet Earth goes round in a circle. And the way you can't do that because you've just trashed our. You just keep going back and back and back and destroying all of academia. I said, ah, I'm good at that. I said, now if you take them in a ring like that, there's 12 of them, and you put it in a ring. Where is that toroidal field? Because if these are all north facing inwards, like that, just do a couple, just so you've got some idea. And you know yourself, if you put a north to a north, it doesn't want to play. It kind of squirts the energy that way and squirts the energy that way. But if you've got an infinite number of points squirting an infinite number of energy, like so, you end up in a circle. But what is in the middle? There's no magnetic field there. It can't exist. Because every single magnet is pushing against itself. It's pushing so hard against itself that the distance achieved here is now less than the strength of the magnet on the outside. So all of that field goes chum, and jumps out here. So you end up with a magnetic field there, which it should have, plus its toroidal event, plus its own existence on the outside. But this is now a very solid line. And in fact, if you took that line and put it in a straight one like that, there's only one. There's no longer four. But when you look at it, there's actually four of them. But they're now going in a straight line. They're no longer going like that. So you've straightened out the magnetic field. And they went, where are you going with that then? I said, well, you're either absolutely stupid, because if you can't see, you shouldn't even be in it. You should go to take a gun, take it outside and shoot yourself, because point is flocking a dead horse. And I said, well, if you take one magnet, and it was that big, and you multiplied it by that number of times, yeah, You've now got, for example, 12 units. That's 12 units at there, okay? At that point. This point is bigger considerably than that. Therefore, if this is an event in time, that is time plus x. That is time plus zero. And that one is time minus X. And he said, you've actually 
isolated time within a magnet. I said, yeah, and time is longer within a magnet than what it is within light. And then when you cut, you're not allowed to do things like, if this gets out to the public, we're screwed. We're all screwed. I says, well, I've made a video and I've made it public. I've made two copies. Where's the other copy? I said, nothing to do with you. I said, because the work that I do outside of working hours, it's got an absolutely diddly squat to do with the Navy. So they changed the laws of the Navy. And they said that you work for us 24 hours and they demanded all my work. They come and raided my house. They stole all my magnets, all my paperwork. They took the fucking lot. Sorry for swearing, but that's what the Royal Navy does. They've done it at HMS Dryad. And I used to live at number 40 Norton Road. And I lived there for 10 years. And that's where all the experiments were done. I went even further. I said, if you've now got that, and you apply a thing called the lens effect, and it applies to two materials, copper and aluminium. If you take a magnet and spin it with inside copper and aluminium, it kind of levitates a bit. So I said, if you made this as a pipe, like a water pipe, and you inserted in the middle a propeller made of aluminium and copper by metal, as the water went across it, it would spin. And it would spin with inside a magnetic field, which is the inverse of the lens effect. And you would ionise the water. And when you ionise water and you drink it, it kills cancer. Shit, says the medical. Don't let the world know that you can fix cancer. It means the pharmaceutical industry is screwed. Well, it's not my job. I'm here to help you, and not here to fucking destroy them. That's what money is. Well, what else you done? I said, well, when you take it on its side like that, and you take a piece of wire like that, and you put it a loop like that, nothing happens. I said, but if you send it around twice like that, and you put that to earth, and you put a magnet on there, magnet becomes an antenna. You've got the earth here as a magnetic field. It goes in there, goes along that wire, across that magnet, changes and comes out here. It goes around that wire twice and goes to earth. And they went, and? It says, well, if you take that and you put a circuit in there, you've got as much energy as you want. What do you want oil for? Jesus Christ, if Saudi Arabia finds out what you've got there, you'll be on the hit list. All right, chaps, I'm here. This is what I look like. If you want to shoot me, come and do it and show you how scared the world are of you. Right? I'm not scared of you. So you can have free energy from a magnet. Put a piece of aluminium, spin the aluminium. You can have a cure for cancer tomorrow. In the meantime, while you're trying to work that out, you're scratching your head. So now the hell are we going to do now? Well, as I turned around and said, when you look at that magnetic field, it does something weird, right? It does that. But if you try and combine that together, you get what's known as a double helix. And the double helix is the same as DNA. Oops. And when you put it through that, you straighten out, technically, the electromagnetic DNA of the whole of the goddamn universe because the magnet has been around us an awful lot longer than humans have. Just because it doesn't eat, it doesn't need to eat because it has its own energy. It doesn't need to breed because it lives forever. But it does like attraction. It doesn't like the opposite. I'll just be a little bit pig ignorant and saying north and south is like a man and a woman. They like it. If you put it the other way, north, north, south, south, don't like it. Two men, two women don't like it. Okay, you work it out. Well, when you can't do this, 
You're trashing the very existence of all of academia than what we've put together, aren't you? What are you going to do? And I says, and when we do all the tests and they showed them all the voltmeters, I'll use that one with my name on it. And I'll show you the picture with me on it. And they said, well, Jesus Christ, what else can you do? I said, I can do lots. But if you notice, everything that I've done here is non-compressive. You can't squash it together to make it to go bang. Nothing of my technology will ever go bang. None of my technology can harm another human being. And the war machine says, we only make money out of pain and suffering. Not my job. My job is to help humanity. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here to crucify humanity. That's what the, the church does. All right. Then we come on to the nasty one. This is one where they want to put a nail in each of my hand and pin me to the wall. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Right at the start on that great big thick book, that 3.7 billion of you believe. I can't show you God, but you believe that. I've showed it showed it you here so why don't you believe it check your own moral compass seeing is believing believing a lie is foolish God said let there be light light according to some is determined as a slight narrow band with inside the electromagnetic spectrum well, it says that the wave is at 90 degrees to the electric wave, which is two. Well, if you've got two like that and you apply it on the same function on zero like that and you put light, you end up with one value here and one value here. Sorry, it is wobbly. It's the same thing where that's the plus and that's the minus. But when you look at this, that's a plus and minus of itself, and that's a plus and minus of itself, which means you end up with a zero over zero over zero. Well, that just screwed the fact that zero, because three zeros together is light, light is energy. Because light and energy has been falling on this planet and even the plants use it to grow and you go and lie on the beach and you get hot as it absorbs in your skin. So, God said, let there be light. And I come along and said, oh diddy, that there's called an LED. Stick a battery on the back end of it and it will glow. If you take an LED and you look at it, a little bit closer. Inside the LED it looks like that. If you said God said let there be light like that and it comes in and I said that you have this effect you end up with a plus and a minus with inside the light. That light energy comes in there all one goes one way and that comes the other way. And when you put a meter inside there, it will give you a voltage. If you've now got a value here other than zero, then you have extracted the energy from the light. Because this is what is known as an open circuit, there is no energy coming in whatsoever, this breaches entropy. It doesn't breach, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. However, if that's the case, Bertie Einstein said that this thing called a photon yeah, 
has no mass. Mass of zero, yeah. C squared, hold on, you shouldn't be able to see light if there's no mass because it breaches its own equation. So Einstein screwed himself when he tried to do that. I turned around and said, well, actually light, if you wanted to view it like this and as positive proof, you can do it yourself. Just take an LED and an AVO and point it at the sun. If you get any number on there other than zero, I'm right there, wrong. Well, if you take this configuration and extrapolate it to make it bigger, as I've said, and you take not one LED, but a couple of thousand of them. Now, it's not an LED, put electricity on it, won't work. If you take this and you expose it to stellar background radiation, believe it or not, the sun's called a star, stellar. This thing works at night, because the star's out there at night. That will produce about 150 volts at 0.9 kilowatts. 150 volts at 900 watts. And it's the size of an A4 piece of paper. If you go and play the solar game, you've got this thing which is like 60 inches by 72 inches. And it gives you 36 volts at 300 watts. Mine, which is that big, gives you 150 volts at 900 watts. Who's screwing who? The cost to make one of these is pennies compared to one of these, and it works at night, where this one only works during the daytime. Because this works day and night, you don't need the tens and thousands of euros worth of batteries on the back. They've deliberately made solar prohibitively expensive, so it never actually has a value to compete with oil. They've done it deliberately. If you can have a device the size of an A4 sheet of paper that doesn't need connecting to a battery and will power your house day or night, what you're paying the electricity for. So the biggest consumption of the planet, the planet is energy in the form of electricity. And by 2040, you lot, if you carry on being stupid, are going to waste 210 quadrillion dollars on the conversion of coal, gas and oil into domestic electricity to power your cell phone and your laptop and your light bulb and all the other things. 210 quad <coughs> excuse me, quadrillion dollars. Me, I built one. That just powered up, and well, that's an LED, and that has been successfully powering itself for more than a year. You don't need to pay for electricity. So all these people, the military in the room, realised that not only did I put them out of a job, I put the energy companies out of the job. I put the oil industry out of the job. I then put the car companies in jeopardy because I can now make that panel that big, about twice the size of a cigarette packet. And it produces 4,800 volts at 21.3 kilowatts and I can drive a car on it. That means I completely annihilate the car industry from the big clunky metal thing under the sharp end. What else you can do, when you take that panel it make it, and you split light, you take your light like that and you split it like that. Um, I've had to give this bit a name because nobody knew what it was and I called it a Titan. 
So we have a Titan plus and a Titan minus. If you now take the Titans and bring them together, there it makes light. But it makes light at room temperature. And it makes energy at room temperature. And you can touch that and it don't burn, it's cold. And when you take that matter and that matter and you fuse it together, you have cold fusion. So you have cold fusion there. Is all light really is, is a magnet without a body. It's no more than that. And when you do it, you can create cold fusion. You can have your own energy and as much as you want. Now the Royal Navy have done their absolute best to destroy me. They tried to send me mad. They sent me to the most inhospitable places. They faked war. They went as far as removing my child from me. So this video is a personal attack and retaliation against the Crown of England. And I'm a goddamn Englishman. I am the perfect English gentleman. And the Royal Navy, in their pirating, scumbag attitude, committed treason, not only against UK, but against every goddamn man and woman on this planet by hiding that video for the last 37 years. They have made you pay. They have made you suffer for 37 years. Now you can all welcome to come and visit me. I live on an island called Pag, P-A-G. And it's in the country of Croatia. Come and pop along, visit my lab, Leave me a couple of euros at the door because I don't have a job because the Navy told everybody never to employ me. I have charity people help me out. But you want this tech, which is going to free you. If you want your children to grow up in a clean, healthy environment, then this tech is here for you. If you don't want to be a slave to the government and the banks and the war machine, then this tech is here for you. I can't say anymore, but I will make another video. Now, I've got to find a way of uploading this video without the military seconding it. So when I take this video off, I'm going to copy it to 20 microsims. And I'm going to go and hire a car for cash somewhere. And I'm going to go and deliver these 20 sims to 20 news agencies all around the world. I'll make sure China's got a copy. I'll make sure Russia's got a copy. And India and South Africa. All the countries that the UK and the US have abused. They will show the video. They will make sure that the world finds out what the United Kingdom done to one man. Thank you very much.